Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. They had a magnitude 5.6 earthquake in the Samajan uh, fault zone. I got it drawn out here in a square of orange and also yellow. This area does have a history of very large earthquakes and tsunamis, very destructive earthquakes. This is an area where they have very shallow earthquakes because it's a very shallow subduction zone. The 5.6 was only 6.2 miles in depth. There was a foreshock yesterday probably, a magnitude 3.4. That was only 3.0 miles in depth. USGS gave it an intensity level of only two, and only one person said they felt this earthquake. I don't know what location they said they felt that earthquake, I really can't find it here on the Did You Feel It uh, map. Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me. Please like, share, and subscribe. Can you believe it's already August 1st? The Alaska subduction zone is one of the most seismically active regions in the United States. And while it has diverse types of seismicity, shallow subduction earthquakes are characterized both moderate and large mega thrust earth events. The Aleutian Islands, the trench is divided up into three different sections. Drawn out in yellow would be the eastern section. And then we got the central section and then you got the western section. But I'm going to talk about this eastern section. I've been keeping an eye on it because it's been having quite a few earthquakes lately. Although they have been really small. But I'm going to use Google Earth and we're going to go to the Prince William Sound area, which has a history of at least 11 large earthquakes, mega thrust earthquakes, going back probably 6,000 years. The Shimigan Gap is about 250 kilometers or about 155 miles. I got that drawn out in orange here for you. Currently, there's been a lot of tension that has built up because of the movement of the plates. And they say this area is capable of having a magnitude 8.2. Myself, I probably feel it's probably more like a 9, 9.2 or larger. Um, back in 2021, there was in fact a magnitude 8.2. That event, um, the earthquake, actually started with the 2020 um, 7.6 near Simon Island, right there. USGS actually has it a little bit farther off. You can see we got two other islands here. This region had been identified as a seismic gap, they say. Identified as uh, no large ruptures since 1847. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, that was uh, off somewhere over here. 1946, there was a 9.3. Boy, that was a really destructive earthquake. Sent tsunamis all the way to um, the Arctic and also to Hawaii. In 1890, an earthquake occurred near Chirica Island. Let me bring that over there right there that island actually tipped yeah you hear about um different conspiracy theories about the hawaiian islands tipping or tipping over this one actually ended up tipping during that earthquake the reason i'm bringing up these different events is to give you an idea what can happen in the future everything that has happened in the past yeah it's going to happen again they believe that the tipping of the island in 1890 actually was probably similar to the event in uh, 1938 um, along this same location. They believe that the 1890 earthquake actually ruptured the entire um, Schumingen Gap. 
Okay, let me go back over here. This is the location of that gap. But this is actually the whole seismic zone. I want to try and find where I put the uh, 1938 event. All right, found the location. I had to mark it out. I didn't have it on here. Anyways, uh, different geologists have different opinions that it did or it didn't rupture this gap. But I'm going to say that it probably did because it created a tsunami. And that was a magnitude 8.3 right there. So they believe that this uh, magnitude 8.3 ruptured the eastern half of this seismic zone. Again, different opinions. Some say the rupture was 300 kilometers long or 190 miles. Whereas the 1788 earthquake uh, ruptured approximately 500 kilometers or that would be 310 miles okay and that one somewhere over here yeah yeah right there okay right there i don't think i have it mapped out i haven't been able to find it but i'm gonna go because this is the area right here i'm going to show you an image of where this rupture occurred um sikonok island okay we got july 1788 um, the rupture zone drawn out in red and then August 1788 the rupture zone Yeah, this is a major event with what was caused by the subduction of the Pacific plate going underneath the North American plate It was a mega thrust earthquake, which was the worst kind of earthquake you can possibly have um, It was greater than a magnitude 8.0 and rupturing from Kodiak Island to the um, Sumajan Islands and perhaps even to Sanak Island. They think these events were just separated by a few weeks. On Unga Island, I'm going to go there if I can. They believe that the water rose by about 290 feet. Um, it just says the water rose. I don't know if that was a mega tsunami or what. More likely it was a tsunami because the native people, um, what they call the Shugaman people, they ended up abandoning the uh, island. Um, yeah, probably because of that tsunami. Now, the 1946 earthquake was probably the most destructive earthquake that they've ever had. And even though I got it drawn out outside of the area um, of this gap, yeah, they feared it was probably an, um, a 9.3. And that event was one of the most destructive tsunami recorded in the Pacific Basin. Um, and its aftermath. Uh, yeah, tsunamis were recorded over uh, 13,000 kilometers or 8,000 miles. Um, yeah, and they had the destruction all the way to Hawaii which recorded 150 deaths and millions of dollars in property damage. Again, that was uh, 1946. In Central California, sea level was elevated by 2.6 meters above tide, which would be um, 8 feet 6 inches. And that was in Half Moon Bay, California. Yeah, I, I worked down there in Half Moon Bay when I was just out of high school. Um, several bo boats were washed away um, all the way across the coastal highway. The coastal highway is no more. Um, originally, let me show you. Way back when, there was actually a, a coastal highway. And there was even railroad tracks. Part of that highway still remains just below my mother's house, uh, who lives on a cliff overlooking the ocean in Daly City. But, um, yeah, originally there was a highway that ran along the coast here and the boats that were in the harbor were actually uh, washed across the highway but because of erosion and env environmental you know geology changes with our earth yeah the highway is no more it's been rebuilt and you know it's like devil slide devil slide I don't know if that's still open or not probably not I don't think it is if you know let me know but devil slide um, yeah, 
well, because of the name, yeah, it was constantly sliding into the ocean. And below that original road for Devil's Slide was railroad tracks. Let me see if Google Earth will take me into that area. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, it's constantly sliding. But below this was the original highway, and there was actually railroad tracks. At my mother's house, you can still see part of the road, the original road. At least you could when I was a kid. It's somewhere along here, which, let me turn this. Now, this was back in 1973 um, when my parents moved into the one of the houses along here. But if you climbed down the cliff, um, there was part of the original highway complete with um, guardrails and everything like that. And then below that was the uh, original railroad. But that was no longer there when they lived there. But somewhere in there was part of the original highway. I'm rambling, I know. It was only a small stretch of the highway. Um, if it's still there, it might be greatly overgrown. Um, maybe 100 feet. 150 feet of the original highway was was still there. Anyways, that's how I got on that from the boats that were washed across the highway back in that earthquake um, there in Half Moon Bay. Part of this seismic gap is also included um, in that earthquake that they had in 1964. Uh, let me pull this out and go there. That was probably one of the second, or was the second large earth, largest earthquake ever recorded in modern history, a magnitude 9.2. The largest earthquake ever recorded in the world in modern history was in Valdiva, Chile in 1960. That was a magnitude 9.5. Yeah, it makes you wonder, can we have a magnitude 10? That earthquake actually lasted for about 10 minutes, where the earthquake there in Alaska in 1964, um, the ground probably shook for about three minutes. Yeah, can you imagine 10 minutes of shaking back and forth for about three feet in distance for 10 minutes or even three minutes? It's just amazing. But anyways, yeah, I... Been having, I've, I've been noticed there's been more and more earthquakes in this location lately. And I hope everyone is prepared. Giant tsunamis and things like that have, that have happened in the past in this location. Ground uplift, uh, you know, where it tips whole islands. It's just, it's utterly amazing what can happen here on Earth. So anyways, what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.